All right, guys, so the sun never came out. It's still overcast. It's not 60 degrees out, but I'm gonna try to do this anyhow. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do, well, obviously the first thing you do is jack up your car, put stands under it, take your wheels off, and then if you have wheel spacers, you're gonna remove your wheel spacer. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to undo the two caliper mounting bolts. There's one here, and then the other one is down here. Undo those bolts, and then undo this 12 millimeter uh, brake line retaining bolt. Then you're gonna grab a hook and uh, stick a hook under it, take the caliper off, and then hang it somewhere to where it's not pulling on the line. And you're gonna leave that hooked up until you're ready to deal with brake fluid stuff. Uh, this way you have minimal leakage and uh, you're not getting more air in the system than you need to have. So I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna pull the caliper off. I'm gonna pull the spacer off and then I'm gonna unhook the line and then we will be uh, ready to continue to the next step. All right, so we have the brake line unhooked. It would hook through there. We have the caliper suspended to not give pressure on the line. I just used a typical hook or powder, uh, it's actually a powder coating hook, but you can use a you can use a piece of wire or anything. You can even put a box under there just to, to prevent it from pulling on the lines. Um, even though we're not gonna reuse them, I really don't want any damages happening to make possibly the hard lines from it dangling. Um, so it's just to prevent the damage. Uh, next, we remove the spacer and obviously we did undid the caliper bolts. Um, so we're gonna pull the rotor off. We can do that one-handed. This install really shouldn't take too long. All right, so now we are at the point where we're going to remove the dust shield. So this bolt here, that bolt there, and I think yep, that bolt right there. Uh, we're gonna remove the dust shield since we can't use that with the new rotors. And then we are gonna start punching out these uh, these uh, wheel studs and install the three inch APR wheel studs. Now you don't have to use three inch. I chose to use three inch because I was intending on running stock wheels with a spacer. Um, so I chose a three inch. You could probably get away with uh, the size under this, which is I believe two and a half. Um, but either way for this swap, you will have to uh, lengthen your wheel studs. It's not hard, you just put a an old lug nut on here and crack them out and then there's a tool i'll show you in a second where we're going to drive those new spacers through and then we are almost actually ready to start installing the uh the new parts a uh, very quick install pretty much so stay tuned i'll get these uh, wheel studs out and uh we'll start putting the new stuff in all right we removed the upper dust shield bolt bottom dust shield bolt and the the middle dust shield bolt next we're going to be removing the studs you're just going to grab a hammer this is a three pound hammer and you're going to put a old beat up lug nut on it make sure to cover all the threads because you don't want to damage the threads because these aren't necessarily garbage um, you can always clean them off and then save them for later if you decide to go back to stock but if you damage the threads then you can't reuse them so put a lug nut on it, make sure the threads are covered, and then just uh, and tap, and then tap it out. That's all you gotta do. Do that five times, and uh, then you install the new ones. So we'll get to that in a second. Uh, let me remove these, and then I'll be right back. Side, side note, uh, if you, uh, If you move the the wheel stud over to uh, approximately between the two caliper mounting points and you smack it off, it doesn't interfere with the hub and you can pull the lug nut off and then pull it right out. Um, so, I mean, that's just a little tip to help you guys get these things out. It's very easy. All right, let me finish up. All right. All the wheel studs are removed. I am gonna take these three dust shield bolts and I'm gonna stick them back in the holes they came out of and then tighten them down. 
uh, mainly just because I don't like leaving empty bolt holes that are going to fill up with water. Um, so that's why I'm doing it. You don't have to do this. I just, uh, I, I just am. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scotch Bright pad and I'm going to clean off this, uh, this flange right here. And then I'm going to start pulling in the, the wheel studs. Um, so let me grab a scotch Bright, scuff this back up, get this uh, rust off, make sure it's clean. Um, I will be applying a little bit of anti-seize to this. So, uh, the new aluminum spacer does not stick to it uh, further down the road from all the heat cycling. Um, so I will get to the scotch Bright pad. I'll, I'll clean it up and then I'll be right back. All right, guys. So now we're moving on to wheel studs. Um, these are the, um, the ARP uh, three inch studs. They're way longer than stock. Um, it says they're only an inch longer, but uh, I guess because of the bull nose, it's more like an inch and a quarter. Um, but thread wise, it is an inch longer. Um, but stock ARP. All right, so to do these three inch ARP studs, um, these are the three inch ones. I can't speak for the smaller ones, um, but for these three inch studs, you have to loosen up this bolt, this bolt, uh, this bolt, and that bolt right there. Those are the four bolts holding the, uh, the wheel hub assembly on. Uh, you just need to be able to pull it out a little bit, rotate to uh, right about here. You'll know the good spot because it'll have more room um, and then just uh, wiggle it and slip the new stud in. Uh, you can't get the new studs in without unbolting to give yourself some slack. Uh, I tried, it doesn't work, and you don't want to hammer these in because you'll damage the threads. So make sure you have enough wiggle room in your hub assembly to be able to pull it out and push the pins in, or push the uh, studs in. So one more in. All right, so it's not the best spot. There we go, got more room there. Pull the hub out, wiggle it, there you go, drops right in. Um, so I'm gonna do that, and then I'll show you how you set these in. Uh, you can do the washer trick, um, or you can do uh, plenty of other ways to get these things in, but I bought the tool to do it just because I don't wanna damage these. Uh, these aren't really cheap. I mean, they are 40 bucks a pack, which is kind of cheap for, uh, I guess, wheel studs, but, um, I don't feel like going out and buying new ones because I damaged them installing them. Um, so let me grab the tool, I'll show you how to use it, and then I'll get these the rest of these installed and then we'll keep moving on. All right guys, here's the tool. Uh, bearing side, cone side. Bearing side goes down on the, uh, the lug nut. You're gonna grab a lug nut, make sure it's a hex key and not a spline drive or a security, security hex or a security uh, lug. You're gonna tighten it down until everything sandwiches up nice and snug. And then you're gonna inspect it, make sure it's e even all the way around. So once I get this thing, once this lug gets on, it's, man, these are some long lugs. So that's in there like that. It's nice and snug. I'm looking at the back side. it's not crooked. And then you grab your socket key, your impact gun, and uh, just drive it home. Lug stud installed. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put the stock rotor back on after I'm done with this. Um, because these are long lug studs, I wanna make sure that when I go when I go to a direct fit rotor through a Paragon, I'm gonna be sending them the specs for the rotor. They're gonna make me the rotor, and then I'm gonna test them on here. Um, but I wanna see how much stud I'm gonna have inside of a, a, a lug stud. I wanna make sure that I can still put caps on it to prevent water getting into the threads and corroding them and plus the insides of these lugs tend to get all rusty um so i want to make sure that i'm able to seal my lug nuts uh, up from the elements so i'll get to that i'll finish up these i'll throw the rotor on and i'll show you what it looks like with the wheel and rotor as if it was factory uh what the stick out is of the uh of the lug nuts just in case someone wants to do longer studs but may or may not want to upgrade or but 
has the possibility or wants to, to upgrade to a, to a single, or sorry, a two-piece uh, direct fit rotor, you're gonna see what your wheel stud length is. And maybe that'll be the, the determining factor on if you buy the three inch or the two and a half inch versions. All right, so let me let me hop on this, uh, get the rotor on, get the wheel on, and then I'll be right back. All right, so the studs are all done. I installed the wheel and the rotor. So this is gonna be the fitment that you'll have with these three inch studs. If you decide to swap over to direct fit rotors and run no spacer behind the rotor, so with these open end, um, with these open end lugs, you're almost up to the uh, the tip. So you, you're just gonna spray this section here with some uh, WD-40, and uh, it should prevent uh, any corrosion and rusting inside this area of the lug. But uh, not too bad. I, I was uh, I was concerned they were gonna be hanging out of the lugs and look like Spartan wheels, um, like off a chariot. Uh, but either way. Um, this is just the fitment um, if you decide to use direct rotors. So yeah, not too bad. I was really, I was concerned <laughs> uh, because these slug nuts look massive compared to stock. All right, let's get on to the swap. All right, so disassembly um, and then reinstallation of the studs. Uh, that time was probably about 30 minutes or so. Uh, it took me longer since I was filming uh, we're getting on to the good stuff. Here's the bracket for the driver's side. It's gonna go on like like this um, It's gonna utilize one factory mounting hole to, to bolt this onto and then this upper bolt hole you're gonna take a, a 916 drill bit and ream that out So you can get the caliper the caliper bolt through the bracket and into the back side of the caliper um so yeah let's get to uh let's get to doing that i'll get everything ready and then i'll show you what i'm doing all right so what you're gonna do here in this step is you're gonna take your 916 drill bit you're gonna drill this top hole spray a little wd-40 and go slow it'll cut like butter um and then after that you're going to take the bolt that comes in the kit this bolt right here it's gonna go down here and then this bracket is going to bolt on just like that and then the, that top hole and this hole right here are the mounting points for the caliper um, so let me bolt this up and then uh, th I'll throw the rotor on and then we can get the caliper mounted up and then pretty much that's the full uh, install for the actual physical parts and then the last part is obviously brake lines and bleeding uh, and then you do the exact same on the next side. All right, so we've got our bracket on. We've got the bottom hole uh, snugged, but not fully tightened yet. Want to make sure we get the caliper on first and everything lines up before we snug everything up. Uh, next, we're going to install this spacer. We're going to add a little bit of NICs on the back side of this and on the front side. That's going to prevent the aluminum from getting stuck to the hub and from the rotor getting stuck to the, the, the spacer. So let me do that, get that on, and then um, we'll get the rotor on and slowly line up the caliper. All right, so we got a little bit of NICs on the front side of that plate and on the back side of the plate. I also threw a little bit of NICs on this bolt right here. When you're plugging in or you're screwing in metal um, to an aluminum uh, product, uh, you don't want the indifferences of metal to actually get seized. So I, a little bit of NICs on this bolt right here. Next goes the rotor. Uh, see if I can get this up with one hand. Actually, let's move this out of the way. Now, these are DBA rotors. They're uh, kind of like semi-universal. They've got two bolt, two bolt patterns in them. So just find the correct holes and then chuck that on there like that. So that is on there. And now let's run a, let's run a wheel stud down there to hold the, uh, to hold the rotor on while we work on the other stuff. So that's on there like that. 
everything seated. Let me grab another lug nut. All right, grabbed another lug nut. Let's drive this one down. Just wanna make sure everything is sitting straight while we install. All right, so rotor's on there flush. Everything's good. Now it's uh, get the caliper mounted up and uh, see where we go. All right, let's get that caliper. All right, so here's our caliper. Uh, this is one of the reasons why these GM uh, calipers are better than the Brembo's. The Brembo's do not use metal uh, bushings pressed in, so you're not you're not screwing it into aluminum. Uh, the STI ones, you tend to find a lot of them with stripped out uh, stripped out threading. It's because you're plugging a bolt into an aluminum housing, and they corrode and pulls the thread with them when you back them out. Um, so that's why these calipers particularly are actually better than the STI construction ones. Um, so let me get the caliper up. Here are the two bolts. You're gonna line up the caliper ears to uh, that hole right there and that hole right there, and then bolt this thing on. All right, let me get it up and I'll show you. All right, so let me show you uh, the revision I had to do because I did make a mistake. I ended up putting the spacer on the front side of uh, this bracket here, of the knuckle. It actually goes on the back side and the bolt comes through the front side and pulls a spacer in. Man, I'll tell you, that was such a freaking scare. I literally thought I just drilled my knuckle and had to, and had to uh, replace it. I should have known because I was the one who, um, who drilled the knuckle the first time, installed some spacers, bolted it up, gave uh, CTSV brake swap, um, dot com my measurements as to what i thought uh the spacer would be and i even mailed them the spindle so they could verify all that stuff and and tweak anything that was needed um so whew, disaster averted i'm so relieved um i just i don't know sometimes when you do installs uh just you overlook things you don't put things correctly and then you think you have other problems when you really don't i just had to step away and think about it and uh yeah, so every, everything is fine. Um, I will say that that bracket that I had put on was actually the wrong side as well. Um, <coughs> um, so I ended up putting the left side or the right side bracket on the left side. And um, there's the one I had. You can see because it has the, uh, the anti-seize. Uh, logo faces inward. It does not face outward. Um, just like this. So, all right, guys. Um, let's continue on with the install. I'm going to put the rotor back on. We're going to mount the caliper and then I will show you the reveal of uh, what it looks like with the caliper mounted. All right, guys, it is starting to rain. So I will be putting the tools away for a little bit, packing it up, going inside. But at least now you guys have a visual rep representation of what a caliper from a Cadillac, uh, CTS, ATS, whatever Brembo looks like on the 23 WRX. Got the Brembo pads. Everything is greased and lubed. Um, I did wipe down the rotor with some uh, brake cleaner before I put the pads on. But uh, let's step back and take a look at it. That is gonna look good. Um, I, I will do one more thing before I go in for today. And that is one of the biggest questions, probably the most of you guys will ever have is, does it work with stock wheels? And let's find that out right now. All right. All right, you guys can stare at my puddles. So here is my, my view from my house. Uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. All right, so enough procrastinating. I know this is what you wanna see. So this is exactly what you can expect when you install these brakes. I, I think that this dark silver metallic with crystal clear uh, clear coat was a perfect option, especially with these stock wheels. I might not even get another set of wheels powder coated at this point. So let me know what you think. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. The install is not done. I still have to bleed the brakes. I have to do some other things, small things. Um, then we'll get on to the rears. But right now, uh, these big brakes will clear your stock 18 inch wheels without any additional spacers no five millimeter spacer no three millimeter spacer just bolt the wheel on and it clears perfectly 
the gap is a little bit tight, but if you looked at the new TR, I mean, it must be like the thickness of a debit card and a half between the rim and the, the, the caliper. Um, so without further ado, check this shit out. Look at that. Those rotors. Man, look at those rotors and that caliper, especially the way the caliper pops against, I, it's, it doesn't look like it in the video, but the way that silver pops against that gray, it just, it just screams aggressive as hell. So I'm really glad I chose that color for my calipers. It took me a long time to lay that color down because I was continuously making mistakes and had to reblast the calipers off and start over because I'm a perfectionist and I got them done. But uh, man, just the way that silver pops off of that dark gray wheel color, I think it looks good. Um, let me know what you guys think. Should I get another set? Or I have another set, but should I powder coat a set of these wheels in bronze? Um, I'm going for that ultimate OEM plus look. I want massive power. I want to look stock and I just want to, I, I want my car to be something that nobody expects to be anything but a stock car. Um, I'm not looking to make it flashy, not, no big ass wing, none of that ghetto bullshit. People stick all over these things. I, I'm not, I'm not all about that. I want that clean stock look, um, lots more power than stock, um, but I, I think that this looks like it could have came from the factory that way and no one's gonna question it. Uh, the color's not too vibrant. It doesn't scream, look at me. Um, it's a very subtle thing that you notice when you start looking at the car and that's pretty much what I'm going for. So let me know what you guys think. All right, uh, we're gonna do the brake bleeding next. We're not gonna do it today because it's raining and I'm not gonna be in the rain doing this. But tomorrow I will do the other side, um, bleed the brakes. Uh, cars and coffee on Sunday. That's in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, maybe some of you guys will be there and see this setup. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess that is it for now. Uh, stay tuned for part two when we finish this up. I'm gonna end this video now. I'm pretty excited about it. I really want to get this installed up online. So we're gonna go with part two. Uh, part two is gonna be finishing up the brakes, and then I'll show you. The, the full outcome once it's lowered down on the ground, everything else. I'm contemplating whether or not I wanna run a spacer on top of these, um, just because right now, uh, 55 millimeter stock uh, minus spacer. So I'm at, mm, I wanna say a plus 44 or 43. I'll have to lower it on the ground and see what it looks like. Um, and then I'll decide from there. I was kinda going for that plus 20, so it'd be a 35 fitment. But uh, I might just wait on the 35 fitment until I get direct rotors. Um, but uh, either way, guys, comment, like, subscribe, and uh, join the channel for sure. Thanks.